All right, guys. Injury prevention is a massively important thing. If you want to get the most out of your game, you've got to stay healthy, you got to avoid injuries. There are plenty of ways to maintain your health. And we're thinking a little bit outside of the box on this one. Guys, you want to prevent injuries? Just make sure you don't have to put yourself in danger in the first place. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Subscribe now to order your on-field bodyguards. Never go into a tackle again. Guaranteed to land every punch. The truth is that there are so many different things you can do to help prevent injuries and maintain your body. Some are active and some are passive, but the most important thing is that you stay consistent and make them a habit. There's always been some controversy on whether or not players should be doing static or dynamic stretches, and according to most researchers, footballers should be leaning towards dynamic stretching. That doesn't mean static won't play a role, but we'll get into that later. If you're preparing to play a game or train, then dynamic is where you're going to want to start. It activates muscles you use during games. It's going to improve your body awareness, balance, and coordination. It will improve your range of motion and a whole bunch of other things. Take a look at a few examples here. You all know the quad stretch, but rather than standing, we get a light jog in between. We don't want to hold the stretch for very long, something like three to five seconds. We want our bodies to get ready for the movements that we'll be making in games. From there, we can move into leg swings. Notice how we use a wall for balance, swinging our legs from back to front. We'll go about 10 times on each leg before swinging side to side. So we face the wall and really focus on letting our hips do the rotating. By now, we can get into some deeper movements. So we can combine a deep lateral lunge into a hamstring hold for a few seconds. Then even get more complex with this lunge quad hamstring stretch. You of course don't want to forget your hip flexors because of all the movements in soccer. Guys tend to be very tight in this area. So you can look to fix some of those with these simple stretches here. Static stretching can be done after games or training. It's ideal to hold each stretch around 30 seconds. We never want to feel pain while stretching. If you do, back off. We just want to feel a slight discomfort that lets us know we're pushing it a little bit. Try to hit all your major muscle groups and find a routine that works for you and stay consistent. Foam rolling has of course become more popular in recent years. You can always find guys rolling out before and after training. You can see I've got a normal foam roller and a PVC pipe. The pipe is going to dig deep, so if you're new to this, stick with the softer ones. Quick things to avoid. We don't foam roll our lower back and avoid rolling over our joints. Now the claim is that foam rolling will increase your joint range of motion, muscular performance, and help in your overall recovery. And while there is not yet enough empirical evidence to say that's 100% true, what we do know is that most players are benefiting from this in some way. And you can get those benefits from just two minutes of rolling. So we see as I'm rolling out different muscle groups, you'll wanna make sure to hit all the ones that we as footballers use. Hamstring, calves, quads, adductors, IT band and glutes will roll each muscle group 30 to 60 seconds and when you feel a knot or place of soreness pause for a few seconds and then keep rolling these exercises are some of the most important ones you can do off the field because their goal is to strengthen the muscles joints and ligaments that are most important to the game we told you guys to grab a band around day five so hopefully you've got it ready these movements are so incredibly beneficial not just in preventing injuries but also in making your movements more coordinated and stable we'll start with the band around our ankles walking forward and then backwards from there We'll go sideways, facing the same way, down and back. We'll do monster walks down and back, where we make our stance a little wider, almost squatting, and then to finish it off, we'll take steps out at an angle, down and back. You will no doubt be feeling it after this, so take a quick rest before moving on to these hip rotations. One of the best things about this is that you don't need anything to do it, and it looks easy, but it's not. 
Standing on one leg at a time, we'll extend our leg as straight as we can, raise it up about hip distance and bring it back down without touching the ground. From there, we'll head out to the side and follow everything up by making circles to the outside and then inside. We'll start with 10 on each movement before switching legs. Starting with the standard plank, we'll hold for 30 seconds to a minute and switch to do both sides. Squeezing our core as we go. If you want to push yourself a little more, you can add 20 to 30 seconds of this exercise at the end of your plank circuit and then we'll change it up. We're not trying to get a full workout in, but we want to make sure we catch our back and glute muscles. So we'll hold with a back raise anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds and go into this exercise here where we repeatedly raise up and down. We spoke about ankle strength on day nine. It's obvious why this is important for footballers. And here's another way to make sure you're all good. You can definitely use a smaller band if that's all you've got, but if you have access to a longer band, it'll make it slightly more effective. Hook the band to the underside of your foot, more towards the top, hold tight and push down and up against the resistance. Then we'll push to the outside, staying under control as much as possible. And from there, we'll make circles with our ankle, one set to the outside and one to the inside. You can of course change it up and add some stability to the drill by standing on one leg while you do the exercise. It's up to you to make sure that you're pushing yourself. Guys, we're gonna give you some ice bath and cold therapy tips and tricks, but we're gonna save those for another video. That way you can get the most out of it. So most of today's info has been provided by Grant Hayes. He's a neuro performance specialist who works with pro footballers, Olympic athletes, and even an Ironman world champion. So please go support him and check out his insanely badass app. Be first, the link is below in the description. You guys are gonna learn sooner or later that avoiding injuries is the best way to go about it. So make everything that you learned in this video a habit. If you can get them done early in the morning, before training or after training, that is the best way to do it. Hope you guys liked it. Throw us a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the Patreon page, Snapchat, Instagram, all that stuff. See you guys tomorrow, peace. You know what? I need some water, man. The asset needs water now. <sighs> you know, I don't want any, so let's just go. Yeah, we'll <laughs> 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 Cut, all right, that's good. <laughs>